Hello everybody. Recently in the mail I got some erbium oxide and some neodymium oxide. And I first became interested in these rare earth ingredients uh, back in somewhere in the late 90s or the early 2000s when David Peer wrote an article about them for Ceramics Monthly. It was a really good article. I just was blown away. I'd never seen anything so bright and so vibrant before. So um, I don't claim to be an expert on them. I've only used neodymium before and I've used it very little in one or two base glazes. So I, I really don't know much about them. This video is more of a type of video of, hey, this is what I tried and um, this is what my results are. I'm not claiming to be an expert at these at all. Okay, like I said, I've only used them once or twice and I've never used erbium before. So I, I have no idea what it's gonna do. Now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making a line blend. So I'm gonna uh, go start at very small increments and I'm gonna go 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%. Um, in both ingredients to see what um, what color I like the best and uh, so I can make a larger batch if it turns out good. And the base glaze I'm using comes from this book, page 72. It is called Campana Clear. I've used this glaze before and oh, here's an example right here. Here's a test tile. This is it with copper. It was a really nice glaze. It fits my clay very well. You can see there's no crazing at all. It moves just a little bit. I like the way it goes from thin to thick and changes colors. It's a really pretty glaze. Um, so I'm really curious to see what it looks like with these uh, rare earth um, ingredients. Again, I'm not an expert on this. I have no idea what it's gonna turn out. Um, so I'm really excited to see, and I thought you'd bring, along, bring you along for the journey. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set my gram scale for two grams. And in my blender, I have a 200 gram batch of the Campana Clear. Again, it's on page 72 of this book. And if you don't have this book already, you really just need to get go and get it. It's it's one of those books, you know, every 10 years or so, a really, you know, like a good book comes out like this. Um, um, for example, the Cushing Handbook, Rhodes Clay and Glazes for the Potter. You know, it's one of those books that's just so complete and it has everything that you need to know in it. So if you don't have it already, you really need to go get it. I'm not going to share the recipe with you. You can, you know, buy the book yourself. Um, like I said, it, you won't be disappointed. So I'm going to set, got my gram scale set for two grams. I'm going to put two grams in the blender, blend it up, dip the tile in there. Of course, I'm going to use a respirator. Um, safety is really important to me. So I'm going to put that respirator on and you won't be able to hear me. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. Add two grams into the blender, blend it up, dip a tile, two more grams, etc., etc. And because I'm using a 200 gram batch, two grams is actually 1%. So it'll be 1%, 2%, 3%, and every one will get a little bit more. That way I can make just one batch of the base glaze and get nine different results from it. It's a really easy way to do it. I call it a line blend. I'm sure there's many other names for that same test. So here we go, let's mix them up. So I've marked the bottom of the tile with an underglazed pencil. And one thing I forgot to mention before is that the Campana Clear calls for, it just says kaolin in the book. And I chose to use Grawley kaolin. I'm gonna be, these are Grawley kaolin porcelain tiles anyway. So um, I find that Grawley kaolin just has a really bright white base to it. So it brings out bright colors. So I think it'll work good. So this is 1%. I dip the tile in. I'm gonna do a three second one two, three, pull it out, shake it, and set that aside to dry.
Okay, you can see already how this is the 1% down here at this end, and you can see how already, even before they've been fired, you can see how it gets slightly darker as the concentration of neodymium increases. So after they come out of the kiln, hopefully that'll be the same way. You'll have a lightish purple over here and then a darker purple down here. Can't wait to see them. <clears throat> now I chose 9% because the last time I used neodymium in a glaze, it looked the best around 7 to 8%. So I'm hoping that, you know, 9% will be probably oversaturated and then somewhere hopefully in this range will be the good one but if you don't go high enough then you'll never know what it looks like and vice versa it probably won't look very dark at all down at this low end but if you don't try it you won't know the kiln is firing the test houser in there i'm going to go ahead and hit the review button on the the kiln so you can see the firing schedule I do slow cool the kiln that's because a lot of the glazes i use i grow little micro crystals in them just to give them some texture um, this is a Scott KM 1027. I'm going to go ahead and hit the review button so you can see the firing schedule. Here are the results of our firing. This is the neodymium you're looking at, and over here is 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, and then finally 9%. I'm really happy with the results. I doubt that the light here is being captured by the camera. I had a hard time finding a good place in my backyard. I think they're really interesting. I think my favorite is actually somewhere in the 8 and 9%. I'll get a close up of this so you can see what it looks like. So you can see the color is great. At 9% it seems to be growing some crystals and it's almost becoming matte. So I, I think it might be a little oversaturated there but very interesting surface to look at. You can see the purple is beautiful. Okay. And clearly it has pulled some of the black underglaze. It's an Amico Lug 1 black underglaze on there. Again, this is on Grawleg porcelain, cone 6. Really nice surface, really beautiful glaze there. That is again the 8%. 7%, it's pretty transparent. There's not a whole lot of crystals in it. Nice glaze. Next, let's look at the erbium. Okay, same thing here for the erbium. We have 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5, 6, 7, 8, and finally 9% of the erbium. Yep, that's 9. Okay, really happy here again as well. Um, you can see that if you look up close, there's almost some little white crystals growing in there, but look what it did with that lug one underglaze it's just gorgeous the way that streaks into the glaze really interesting i think that's one of the really cool things about erbium is that you can get a pink that's transparent if you were to use mason stain like a 60 20 you might be able to get the same color but there's no way you'd ever be able to see the underglaze through it so well so really interesting um i just don't think that camera is going to capture how nice that pink is So there's the erbium. Again, I think somewhere in this 
final seven, eight, nine percent is what I would use in a glaze. Finally, I couldn't help myself. I had to put these glazes on a pod, even though I hadn't tested them yet. So this is one of the cups that I made. I, I think it is the cup that I made the handle for in my last handle video. And um, here I've used the Erbium Pink. It's so again at the 9% level. I just used it right out of the blender at the end there. And then this, the uh, Neodymium um, Purple there. And then same here, I got the pink and then the purple. And just for, and from the John Britt book as well, this blue right here is, I got my little notes to the side here. This blue is called Variegated Slate Blue. It is on page 117. And then on the top of that blue, I used a sprayer and I oversprayed Jen's Juicy Fruit, the copper one. And that is on page 177. And with that slow cool of the kiln, you can see how nice those crystals are in that glaze. It's just absolutely gorgeous. You can see that this pink, this Erbium pink, has pinholed in a few locations. Right there, you can see some pinholes. This is on a different porcelain. This is Mary's porcelain from Laguna. So it appears that at least the Erbium pink is not compatible with this porcelain from Laguna. It's, again, it's called Mary's porcelain. It's a dirty porcelain. It's got some ball clay in it. Um, the, I did not get any pinholing on my test tiles, which are Brawley porcelain. I did try some of this same glaze base with copper on some of this Mary's porcelain and it pinholed as well. So it appears that this base doesn't work so good on Mary's porcelain at cone six. That's, that's my observation on Mary's porcelain. This Campana clear base pinholes. Um, they were bis to 04, slow bisque. All right, that's my experiment. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and I'll do some more on my channel. If you didn't like it, write down in the comments what I need to change. And uh, hit that subscribe button and I'll make more videos. Have a great day.